Uh, thank you, Shai. We both here represent the views and the platform of Kadima and uh, the need to move forward in order to represent the values and the vision of the State of Israel. I would like to thank you for inviting me to come here today, uh, Mr. Lauder, and to welcome uh, the former president of Peru and Uruguay, our friends. Thank you for coming. And uh, before I entered the room, I was told that I can never compete this view. And I would like to say that everything that we are doing, this view is tattooed on our hearts in any decision that we need to make in the future. Uh, and it is true that we gather each and every year and uh, we discuss the threats that we need to confront and the challenges that we need to meet as the State of Israel and as uh, the World Jewry. And especially now, there is never a dull moment in the Middle East. There, is, there are different trends in the region. Uh, it's time of uncertainty. We don't know whether what is called the Arab Spring is going to turn into fall, winter, or summer, what's going to be the impact on the state of Israel and the relations between Israel and the Arab world. We know that, unfortunately, Iran continues in uh, its attempt to achieve a nuclear weapon. And um, there is a process of delegitimization of the state of Israel as homeland uh, of the Jewish people. And this process of delegitimizing the state of Israel affects the ability of Israel to defend itself from the threats and terror that we face here. Add to this anti-Semitism that rises its ugly head in different parts uh, of the world, and we need to confront this together, we need to stand together, and we need to redefine with the international community who is legitimate and who is not. And Israel is the most legitimate state in the region. Those that are not legitimate are the Iranians and the Iranian regime, those who tries to achieve a nuclear weapon and weapon of mass destruction, those that speak in terms of denies, uh, uh, denial of the Holocaust, talking about our, their idea to uh, wipe a state of the map, which is, of course, Israel, and together we, knew, we need to recruit the world in order to prevent Iran from having a nuclear weapon. We need to work together in order to delegitimize other regimes and organizations. I mean, take Hezbollah and Hamas. Uh, these are organizations that represent extreme religious ideology. Their ideology is not connected and does not emerge from the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They are not willing to accept or to say that Israel has the right to exist without any connection to the borders of the State of Israel. And uh, they can turn the conflict, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, into a religious conflict, which is unsolvable in a minute. And this is something that we need to avoid and we need to work with the international community in order to delegitimize them and to change the trend of delegitimizing the state of Israel against those that are expressing this kind of extreme religious ideology that is not willing to live with us. And of course, there is another theme that shouldn't be legitimized. Terror is terror is terror. There is no just cause for terrorism. And those extremists are using terror against Israel and not only against Israel. And we need to... Uh, um, recruit the world and to get, get the support of the world in our need and ability to fight against terror. Because there is one thing that we never expect, expect and we cannot accept. And this is uh, the comparison between terrorists and soldiers, and Israeli soldiers. Because there is no democracy in the world, there is no legal system, there is no moral views that view that compares uh, somebody, uh, a murderer, or somebody who killed somebody deliberately and between somebody who killed, unfortunately, somebody in a car accident, for example. These terrorists are looking for children to kill. When Goldstone said in his regrets that uh, he feels sorry because he understands that the state of Israel made its own, our own inquiries, but yet 
Uh, he was frustrated and disappointed from the fact that Hamas didn't make their inquiries. I wanted to say to him that Hamas makes the inquiries when they miss the school bus and wonder they, not when they succeed in attacking uh, Israeli civilians. So it's not legitimate to compare this and together with the entire international community, we need to work against this organization. We need to uh, defeat terror. We need to delegitimize this organization. We need to work together in order to prevent Iran from having a nuclear weapon. Now, this could have been, ladies and gentlemen, my speech today. I'm sure that you heard basically the same words from different Israeli leaders and different Jewish leaders. If I had been a politician, I would have stopped here getting your support and ending this discussion. But unfortunately, I have another responsibility. And it's not enough to be united against those that are against us. It's easy, but it's not enough. We need to stick together, we need to be united, not just against those that are against us, but we need to decide what are we for. And these are historical moments for the future of the State of Israel. And decisions need to be made. And in the most difficult days, Zionism was not just about the threats that we faced, but what is the right action plan in order to change the trends, in order to save the Jewish people, in order to establish Israel as homeland of the Jewish people, and now the mission, the goal of any Israeli government is to keep Israel and to preserve Israel as homeland of the Jewish people, a democracy, a secured state, hopefully living in peace in the ancient land of Israel. But in order to do so, it's not enough to speak about it. We need to make our own decisions. And not making decisions, the meaning is that we are going to lose the raison d'etre of the State of Israel, the reason for Israel to exist as homeland of the Jewish people. And in order to do so, we need to make two different decisions. One is an internal decision. We need to decide for ourselves, what is this Jewish state? What does it mean to us? It's not enough to ask the world to say these two words, Jewish state, when we don't know what does it mean for us. And there are two different poles amongst the Israel society. On one pole, you can find those that for them, a Jewish state means halachic state, those that gives the monopoly on the Jewishness of the state to the ultra-Orthodox party. And this is something that we cannot afford because this represents something that represents only one sector of Israel society. And this is something that alienates young people in Jewish communities, those that cannot understand what Israel means to them, they don't feel the same enthusiasm that their parents felt when the state of Israel was established, and they don't know now what is this Jewish state that they need to defend and to stand for and to advocate for in universities back home because of all this process of the legitimization of the state of Israel and anti-Semitism that they find as young people. The other poll is another poll and another view that I cannot accept because there are those amongst Israel society that for them as Israelis, a Jewish state means a, Jew a state with a Jewish majority. That's all. And I believe that we need to put substance in terms of the Jewish history, culture, Tradition. We need to re-listen to the Jewish music. We need to have a constitution that defines Israel as homeland of the Jewish people, that puts the law of return, that gives the possibility and the right of every Jew who came to the state of Israel to become an Israeli citizen in the moment they land in Ben Gurion Airport, because this is part of our existence as homeland of the Jewish people. 
Of course, the symbols of the state of Israel, the Magen David, the Nefesh Yehudi, Jerusalem, the capital, the ancient capital of the Jewish people and the capital of the state of Israel, the holidays, Saturday, Shabbat, Passover, Pesach, Yom Kippur. I want this to be part of the understanding for every Israeli, Orthodox or not Orthodox or seculars, ultra-Orthodox or just religious people. Because this is something that connects us. In Yom Kippur, here we know when, you know, the sun sets and the cars are parking. It's not important who goes to the synagogue and who stays at home. Who is fasting and who is eating. It's part of thinking about the past, taking decisions for the future, and understanding that we are part of something which is bigger than us. We are part of the entire Jewish people. And what we do here, other Jews are doing the same, singing maybe in different melodies, but the same idea of regrets on one hand, decisions for the future as part, as one or two parts of a whole. So this is that, this, that one decision that needs to be made. And I believe that there is a majority today in Israel to make this decision, but unfortunately, weak politicians are not making this kind of decision. But there is another decision that relates to the future of, the Jew, of the Israel as homeland of the Jewish people. And this is the decision, the only decision, that can turn the vision of Israel as homeland of the Jewish people, democracy, secured state in the land of Israel, to keep this vision and to translate it into an action plan and into reality for the future. And this is to accept, to implement the idea of two different states for two different peoples between Jordan River and Mediterranean Sea. This is not a favor to the Palestinians. It's not a matter of weakness. It's not a favor to the President of the United States. This is our need, and this is an historical moment to do so. Because sometimes, when we are thinking in historical uh, uh, you know, uh, views, we are trying to judge history from another perspective. But there are a few moments in life of a people in which we know that this is the right time to make the decisions or else. And it is a tough neighborhood. And the choice for us as Jews and Israelis is between bad options. Unfortunately, this is the situation. But in choosing between options, we need to choose this option as the better future, as the be better option for the future, future of the state of Israel, and your else is going to be one of two different options. One is that we will be forced to adapt another plan. And for me, it's not important whether the future plan is going to be in Arabic, in French, in Swedish, or in English American. The best thing to do is to decide this for ourselves, to re-enter the negotiations room, and to make the decisions that are needed. The other option, ladies and gentlemen, is that the dream of some of my friends, maybe some of you, some of my friends in uh, uh, the Israeli parliament, that the world, you'd say, you know what? Do whatever you like. We are not going to be involved. You can make your own decision. Without making these decisions, we find ourselves as one state on the ancient homeland of the Jewish people, but it's not going to be a Jewish state. It's not going to be a binational state. It's going to be an Arab state. And if it's not going to be an Arab state, we are going to be forced to express our own values. And I believe that equal rights for each and every citizen, it's not only part of our values as a democracy, but part of our values as Jews. Now, it is true that... It's a tough neighborhood. It is true that we have these extremists. It is true that we have those that are not willing to accept the right of Israel to exist. When we are looking on the other side, on the Palestinian side, we have Hamas. 
There is no hope for peace with Hamas. As I said before, they, they can turn the conflict into a religious conflict in a minute. And religious conflicts are unsolvable. This can be the excuse or the reason not to enter the negotiation room, but I cannot accept this. Hamas was not born yesterday. We faced in the former government the same decision. We could have said, after Hamas won the elections in the Palestinian Authority, that this is the end, that we can do nothing, that we should be together, stick together, united against them, doing nothing, but the meaning is that we are going to lose everything. The other option is an option which is valid also today. The other option is to delegitimize Hamas because there is no hope for peace with them, but yet to relaunch negotiations with any Palestinian government that accepts the requirements of the international community. I want to tell you something about the requirements of the Quartet. You know that they were born here in Jerusalem. Because when Hamas won the elections, we needed to decide whether we say that, okay, this is the end of everything, or whether we can work with the world and recruit the world to our own needs and interests. And we made 